everyone. My name is Claire Stevenson, and today I'm going to talk to you about the impacts of nutrition on bull fertility in beef cattle. So not surprisingly, um, you have to in order you have to maintain a certain level of nutrition in order for fertility to even be achieved. Um, so a lack of proper nutrition for beef bulls results in a decline of fertility. Mal malnutrition results in reduced androgen secretion, scrotal circumference, testes mass, and low semen quality. The semen quality is declined due to a reduced number of sperm in the semen, as well as decreased sperm velocity and motility. There is also an increase in DNA damage to the semen, um, and there are two proposed hypotheses for this mechanism, the first being apoptosis during spermatogenesis or incomplete maturation during spermiogenesis. <clears throat> this is uh, very similar to females as a simple body condition score is an excellent predictor of whether or not a female will catch AI. As reproduction is a luxury event, and if a basic level of plain nutrition is not being met, then the animal will be infertile. Recently, there have been new interest in how overconditioned bulls' fertility is impacted. Uh, so in order to meet market demands, bulls are put on high concentrate diets, which will increase average daily gain and subcutaneous fat. However, overconditioning a bull also negatively impacts fertility. Sperm from overconditioned bulls increases early necrosis and post thaw acrosome damage. <clears throat> this also leads to reduced percentage of cleaved oocytes that developed into a blastocyte stage embryo. This supports previous findings that showed feeding dry distiller grains to bulls increased major sperm defects and sperm with proximal droplets. Dried distillers grains are great for increasing rate of gain, but they're also high in crude fat and sulfur, which has been known to decrease spermatozoa concentration in rams. Therefore, it's important to maintain a balance um, with your plant nutrition. Uh, you don't want your bulls too fat or too skinny, or else it could negatively impact fertility, which is not surprising. Um, that's just basic nutrition. In order to maintain this balance, I wanted to share what we do with our bull calves. So these bull calves are almost a year old in this video, and they will be sold when they're two years old, so they don't have to be pushed very hard, which allows us to prevent those infertility issues of overconditioned bulls since we're feeding a balanced diet with high concentrate ingredients. These bulls are being fed a ration of corn, dry distiller's grains, Chopped alfalfa, chopped straw, corn silage. Meanwhile, their heifer counterparts are being fed a diet of simply just hay barley right now supplemented with protein tubs. Although body condition score has an immediate impact on fertility, there is research being performed to find diets that could improve fertility. In fact, a vet here in Montana adamantly claims that vitamin E supplementation helps to improve fertility. However, many believe that nutrition can only have a lasting impact on fertility during the first six months of the bull's life. So increasing the plane of nutrition during the first six months of age increases gonadotropin secretion, testicular development, and leads to earlier puberty. A 2019 study supports this by showing that diet impacts insulin-like peptide 3 INSL3, which is a biomarker of leading cell functional capacity. Leading cells in the testes are relatively fixed in number after puberty, and the establishment of the hypopituitary gonadal axis. The leading cells are responsible for secreting testosterone, androdosteone, and INSL3, which impacts development and fertility. So. In this study, 
dairy bulls were split into uh, two planes of nutrition, either a high or a low group for the first six months of age. And then from six months of age to a year old, they were split again into either a high or low plane of nutrition. So there were four groups respectively, bulls that were in high, high plane of nutrition, high, low, low, high, and low, low respectively. This was done to see which time period had a greater impact on puberty and fertility, um, zero months to six months or six months to a year. What they found was, <clears throat> regardless of the second diet, INSL3 secretions were impacted more by the first diet. As you can see here, the high diet during the first six months of age um, had a significantly higher INSL3 compared to the low diet. This agrees with previous research that shows a high plane of nutrition in the first six months of age impacts early maturation, age of puberty, and testes size. And the last thing I want to talk about is uh, cotton. So in the Southeast, feeding whole cottonseed or cottonseed meal are a common protein supplement. However, this leads to decreased fertility in bulls due to the toxin gossipol. Gossipol impacts liver function, erythrocyte, oxygen carrying or releasing capacity, respiration rate, feed intake, and reproductive capacity. Reproductive capacity is reduced due to damage to the spermatogenic epithelium, which leads to reduced germinal cell layers and inhibited sperm motility. Luckily, vitamin E supplementation to bulls has been shown to reduce this toxic effect of gossipol. In supplemented bulls, libido was restored as well as successful services. So that's an exciting alternative for Southeastern um, bull producers. Thank you. I hope you guys enjoyed um, learning today about how nutrition impacts fertility in bulls.